feel like my constant need or constant pushing of brendan maybe finally clicking and him figuring out hey don't be this way be cool be cool is a complete waste of time because as evidence with this clip that came out a few years ago of all these comedians behind the scenes talking about brendan shawburn you'd be surprised especially on how bad it was and why did he do it and then i'm going to play you brendan shawb's reasonings as to why he decided to still go forward with a special with showtime it would show you that Brendan's been broken. Brendan's been a lost cause from the beginning. It was never going to get any, it's never going to get better because fundamentally the guy just is a bit, you know, it's a bit tapped as we say here in the UK. So this is a clip featuring Irish Shafir, Saif Al-Khanna and Stephen Brian, Brian, sorry, Biran, I forgot how you pronounce his surname. I'm speaking about Brendan Shaw and you'd be surprised and why he put it out. And then I'll play you a clip showing you of why Brendan Schaub said he put out the special. Let's play this. This is fucking hilarious, man. People failed him, you know. Let's go for saga. Let's go for saga. I think some people failed him, you know. <laughs> no, I mean, true. No, no, I mean, no, yeah, in, a, in a good way. Right. If I was like his friend, I'd be like, I don't know. I don't know if that's that ready. ready? Like, yeah. That's all. I, mean, oh, I wasn't ready. Special TV. You know what I mean? Like, I know, yeah. If that ever happened to me, I would be mortified and I'd be like, why didn't anyone say Why did somebody, why did they set me up for this? <laughs> right, yeah, right. exactly. Yeah. And, and not to be not to dig on, but like Brendan Schaub, that's always been the critique on him when he did that hour. You special. don't have real friends is the critique or they would have told you. I've heard that multiple times, <laughs> yeah. by the way, multiple times. And I think you either overruled them or didn't ask them or they couldn't it, tell I'm a, I'm a shit. <laughs> <laughs> right? But the funny thing is with that, one of the other things is so it aired. And yep. then they try to take it down off, off the, the internet. internet. Right. And the internet reacts to that in an angry manner. I don't think that's true, is it? I, I, I know my You'd Be Surprised law pretty well. They didn't try and take it down. I'm pretty sure they didn't try and take it down, if I'm not mistaken. I think what they, he's talking about is that review shit with one of his sponsors at the time, Brendan, has a sponsor. I think it was some CBD shit, right? That company that was allegedly helping Brendan's kid um, with his epilepsy or something or the fits or something. Is that true? And then he was trying to use the CBD as a way for fans to leave good reviews. I left the good review on his Showtime special on IMBD. He would send them free CBD or get heavy discounts or something along those kind of lines. But I don't think they tried to delete the fucking um, special, if I'm not mistaken. Or am I mistaken? If I am, let me know in the chat. But I don't think they tried to take down You'd Be Surprised. I don't think that's what happened. I think fans were getting upset that they were deleting reviews, comments and shit. Um... AZ reviewing Big Ed's segments would have been so fucking funny when they first aired. Is it? Who's Big Ed? I don't know who's Big Ed. Who's who's Big Ed? Oh, is this a show? Is that what it's called? This is Big Ed's world. We just live in it. Is this what it's called? Big Ed. Who's Big Ed? Is that who this person is? The person on the left. Is that Big Ed here? Oh, Big Ed. Oh, ninety first. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. The guy with the fucking the guy with the no neck. You mean? Yeah. Cool. cool, cool. So I thought you meant this guy's here on the show. The internet no, has no, an no, orgasm, no, no, no. says yeah. you cannot delete our food. And yeah. so then it got pushed way higher. That's if right, they yeah. didn't try to scrub it, it yeah. would have been like, oh, I didn't know I didn't see it. That's why you can't scrub the Sal meme. It's got to stay up. <laughs> they will find it. You know? There are no uh, quilts of him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you I wonder that. how long that takes. That one takes to shake. Like that, t- that would that would hurt. I think me bad. when you're parachuting in Deadpool 2, <laughs> yeah. you know, I think you're like, nah, I think yeah, that's now. true. Right. <laughs> so, interesting way to end it, right? Sal Valcano said, how long do you think it takes to shake the stink of you be surprised because it was so terrible i'm still gonna die on the hill that you be surprised by brendan Schaub is better than gringo pappy that's my final thing i don't care i you know whatever i think it's funny i swear to god it is but i think that question that sapa kind of said or posed how long does it take to shake the stink of that special is the reason why you don't take the Showtime special when you're three or two years into comedy. You don't take it. And I remember the Brendan Schaub defense when it happened, when it, part of his cope was, oh, everybody else, if they got offered that deal, they would take it too. That's his defense. If if Showtime offered you that money, you would no, never say no. It's like, no, some people would. Some people would look at the opportunity and think, what's that term is it um, opportunity cost right in business and think of the risk and reward and be like you know what long term this is probably going to do me more damage than good because what i'm having to bet on because what brennan did is this he had to bet on or he had to hope that he was the one outlier 
he was the one special case in stand-up comedy that didn't need to go the five, ten year route before doing the first special. He had to hope that he was the special one, that it was like a God given talent that he had from birth that he finally tapped into. And now he's going to be on stage doing what he actually should be doing his entire life. And it's going to come naturally to him the same way that Dave Chappelle, when he started doing stand up comedy at 17, 16. That's what he was hoping. Now, that's the probability of that being the case is astronomical. So most people just go through the five to ten years because you're going to get some way down the line. It's, it's, you know, If you would have put out Gringo Pappy as his first special, it wouldn't have been as bad. But because you put out You'd Be Surprised only two years in and it's so terrible, then you follow up five years, six years later with Gringo Pappy that's barely any better and it's shorter, You make it makes you look worse. So that's the reason why if somebody does offer you a... Um, you know a crazy deal for the showtime deal you don't take it because long term it's impossible to shake off that stink he could have four specials that are sick from now on after gringo Pappy. he's never going to shake the stink of you be surprised that's why you don't take the deal but obviously we know i took it because it was good money and obviously it gave him an opportunity to get his foot in the door with showtime that obviously gave him a paycheck every month doing the doing the what's that thing called below the belt show that he did on there so we know why he did it you know technically for the money of course but it did ruin him reputation wise and just in terms of how he's viewed by the public you can never see him as a funny dude even if he does end up being funny he's never going to shake the stink of you be surprised it's just impossible so you've heard them guys say this now you're going to see a video of brendan Schub explaining to harlan williams why he decided to do the Showtime special with only two years in being into comedy. And you're going to be surprised at his answer. You're going to be really surprised. And why he didn't say no, for instance. Let's play the video. The, the, the. It's regret I have. Um, yeah. I mean, I never looked back too much on my past. I like that. It, you yeah, don't want to, right? No. You, it's the fighter in you. You keep going, but... It's the fighter. I guess the one thing, um, as far as regrets go... I. You know, it, it's it's a good product, and I appreciate the people that support it. But I remember, you know, and you'll know this doing comedy. When I, f I was been, I was doing comedy maybe two years when I got first uh, my first major special. Oh yeah, yeah. So Showtime, Showtime asked me to do uh, a special. Yeah. I remember I called uh, Rogan, I called Callen, and I was asking Dilly and Theo, you know, my close friends, and I'm like, don't do it, don't do it, man. Everyone waits about ten years. Did you hear that, Rogan, Brian Callen? Chris D'Elia and Theo Von. He called all of those guys up at the time, close friends of his, and said, hey, Showtime are offering me a deal. They're offering me a stand-up comedy special two years in from only performing in front of my own crowd, not doing any fucking open mics, not doing any fucking, you know, whatever, random places, only performing in front of my own audience, essentially doing a live podcast. They gave me a, show, they gave me a Showtime special, which basically shows you that these executives of these companies are horrendous isn't it right why would you give that guy a special when he's not been performing only for two years doesn't matter they all tell him don't do it joe rogan brian kellen chris delia fear of one they all tell him don't do it but he says there's a reason for that oh, wow. and i had so i was like oh they're just haters they, they you know they're mm. mad they didn't which wasn't the case no, they were trying to protect case. me yeah did you hear that Rewind it. Mm. Man, they didn't, which wasn't the case. Don't do it, man. Everyone waits about ten years. There's a reason for that. Oh, wow. And I had so I was like, oh, they're just haters. They, they, you know, they're mm. mad. They didn't, which wasn't. He said, after Joe Rogan, Brian Callen, Chris Lee, and Theo Von told him, "Don't do the Showtime special after two years. You're not ready yet. Wait until five. You need more time." He said they're haters. At the time, he thought they were haters. He thought they were jealous that they didn't get the opportunity to do a Showtime special. At the time, Rogan had a special on Netflix. At the time, Brian Callen's one before that one that came out was on another network. I think it might have been Amazon. At the time, Fio Von was doing bits and bobs here and there, but he was popping, his star was ascending. At the time, Chris D'Elia had a special, maybe on Comedy Central or somewhere else. So they're all successful in their own right. Maybe the only one that wasn't successful was maybe, at that kind of level, was maybe Brian Callen. But he thought Joe Rogan was jealous of him and was hating. Fio Von was jealous and hating. Chris at that time, jealous and hating. This is evidence to me why I think Brendan might be a lost cause and why I'm, I have, might have to give up my 
Christian pursuit of hoping he just one day wakes up and stops being a douchebag. He thought those guys were jealous of him. Unbelievable. The case. No, they were trying to the protect case. me. Yeah. They're like, no, no, no. There's no reason to. Just keep working. You're, you're doing great. There's no yeah. reason to put this out right now. I was like, oh, they're just haters. No. No. And then I thought, you know, then you do it. And then, and then I thought, oh, people would realize that I was the fastest ever to get a major network special two years in, which is insane. Yeah. And I thought people would realize that. You know, man, only two years in was able to do an hour, and this was yeah. you know, as for doing two years, pretty good. No, no, no. When you do that, you're entering the big leagues. By the way, that's a cope, and I wish I could have evidence of it and find it, but I don't. But I do remember the time he was getting annoyed, and he was kind of boasting about the fact that he got the special so quickly, and he was also using it as a form of validation. I got the special quickly. That must mean I'm funny. That must mean I'm good at what I do. Like it was like a. Basically, him being validated, him being stamped, him being approved, him being kind of made to feel like, yeah, I'm a legit stand-up comedian because I've got a stand-up special. As opposed to, are you actually funny? Yes or no? That wasn't the case. It was more so, you haters don't know what you're talking about. Showtime wouldn't give me a special if I wasn't the funniest person in the world. So now he's trying to rewrite history because he's said the truth in the beginning. That's a rare instance where he let it sip and said the truth. The truth was all his friends told him not to do it. So to answer Sal Valcano and everybody else on there with the previous clip, yes, he did have friends telling him not to do it. Joe Rogan, the most important person in his life who he speaks about more than he speaks about his own mum. Brian Callen, the person that introduced him to stand up. Chris Leah, a person that he's sucking off now even though he's got rape allegations around him and kitty diddling shit. Pierre Vaughan, another person who he tried to claim credit for in terms of his career as a good friend of. All people that he respects and looks up to and played a, mon a pivotal moment, pivotal part, sorry, pivotal part in his career, all told him, don't do it. The guy still did it. Why? Because he's a fucking redact. Lost cause. Absolutely insane to think people that are jealous of you. Yeah, it, yeah. It's showtime. So you're there with the, you know, the Sebastian had a special on showtime, yeah. Eric Griffin, Bur Birds on HBO. Like so, seasoned guys have been doing yeah. it 20 years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that, they were just trying to protect me. Yeah, they were. Yeah, they were. I can honestly were. back that up. Yep. Victim. No, not protect you. They were trying to tell you not to do it because it was a bad idea and it'd be terrible. And it was. Still, you'd be surprised. It's better than Gringo Peppy. But the other side of it, Brendan, is how do you say no? Like, imagine That's if Joe Rogan two years in or me or anyone, they said, hey, we want to, you know, you're too new to not know that that it's probably the wrong move you're like oh my god this is this Harlow Williams is a good guy and he's trying to be really fun and really help him out but this is not a good excuse Brendan had the advantage that nobody else had he had seasoned comics around him professionals who's been in the game for a very long time all giving him advice all a stone's throw away because he was pally pally with Rogan it allowed him access to people he probably shouldn't be friends with or know in any way shape or form so if you actually wanted to have advice or you know get some insight or have a second opinion on something he could have asked and the time that he did ask they all told him no don't do it and he didn't listen so this excuse isn't applicable to Brendan in my opinion but Harlan Williams is a good guy so he's just trying to be nice this will propel me that you know it, yeah it, it's like any in anything like and if, I, I always learn the hardest way yeah like and they know that with anything it's like I, I have to learn the way I learn and I that's not a good way to go about life though you're a 40 year old man with kids and shit you have to learn by what always slamming your finger in the fucking car door why can't you just watch where you're closing the door and watch where your fingers are going that's not a, that's not that's not a a good thing to brag about in my opinion or, or, or am i mistaken here i don't think you should be boasting that you have to learn by failing you have to learn by producing one of the worst specials of all time a special that's going to haunt you until the day that you die kind of thing. Why would you do that to yourself if you don't need to? If you have the ear of all these amazing stand-up comedians and podcasters and shit and people in the industry that can tell you don't do it, why not take their advice? Why not listen to what they're saying? They know what they're talking about. Why should you have to go through the things that you went through just so you can learn? <laughs> why, why do that? You gotta learn. Taking the, the toughest road. It's like if they said for your second fight, hey, we know you're new, kid, but we want to put you in against Chuck Liddell. Yep. Would you go no? Maybe. Probably not. Yeah. Maybe you would, but no, I'd say I no. wouldn't. Yeah, I'd probably say no. Or at least hopefully the, my management team would be like, you're not ready for that. Right. You know?
But, but everyone, but the as far as the business wise, everyone around me is like, "Yeah, this is great, free rate." But the yeah. real comics who I respect so yeah. much and idolize, they're like, "No, there's his problem. He's always, you know, as much as he likes to say he doesn't, he's dictated. You know, he moves by money. If he doesn't make money, it doesn't make sense. So it made a lot of money, which makes sense to him. So he took the deal, and then they end up kicking him in the ass. Really, to be fair, yeah. no upside. You're doing great. Just keep doing what you're doing. Doing your, yeah. your tours. Keep doing that. There's no reason. There's no rush. And therein lies the problem. And I've said it from the beginning. I've always said that Brendan isn't a stand-up comedian. He shouldn't be doing stand-up in any capacity. Zero. He shouldn't be doing it. What he should be doing is live podcast or some sort of live version of the Shorb Show or whatever it may be. And having it be interactive. So maybe mixing elements of the golden hour of the Shorb Show and the Fire and the Kid and doing that on like a weekly basis, bi-monthly basis with Brian Callen also. I think they'd actually make more money together on the road than they would do separately. But these comedians are all greedy. They want to double dip and shit. They don't, want, they don't like splitting money, whatever it may be. But they'd actually make way more money going on the road together and doing little kind of shows and kind of connecting with the fans that way. But they don't like it. Brendan doesn't like his fans. He doesn't like to split money. And, you know, Callan has to fucking pay 20 grand alimony and shit. So they probably all need the money. I understand it. But he should probably spend way more time doing some sort of variety live podcast show thing than doing stand-up comedy because he just hasn't got it. He just hasn't got it. Simple as that. And he actually would make more money doing that than doing stand-up because it's, you know, it's something you could kind of maybe milk a bit more with merch and shit and whatever it may be. But for some reason, he doesn't do it. So if you ever wondered or if you're ever kind of curious, I wonder if some of his friends told him not to do stand-ups to do a special. They told him, but he didn't care. Be up, Crash. You should be Bobbis manager and fashion consultant. <laughs> yeah, I would, mate. But he doesn't like black people, so it wouldn't work out. But big up, Crash. Thank you for the $1.99 super chat. Big up, Austin Casey. Oh, let me do that again. I always thought that Brenda did the first special so quickly because he was trying to shake off the public humiliation of Rogan telling him that he should stop fighting. It was his way of quickly proving that he didn't need UFC because he was a... Yeah, Austin Casey. Let, hold on, let me do that one more time. Let's see if it plays. I always thought that Brenda did the first special so quickly because he was trying to shake off the public humiliation of Rogan telling him that he should stop fighting. It was his way of quickly proving that he didn't need UFC because he was a... Yeah, I agree. Uh, didn't need UFC because he was a comic now. Uh, Austin Casey, that's a brilliant point. That's actually a very good point. I never thought about it that way. That makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. That he rushed to sign because I think that happened around the same sort of time actually getting offered the deal with Showtime and then it all kind of made sense okay cool now I can kind of that's the epic bounce back you get humiliated by Joe Rogan on the JRE a friend calls you out in public like that Brian Callen doesn't help you you're dead drowning with Rogan staring at you telling you that you're going to get smashed by everybody that's top five or top ten you kind of embarrassingly have to agree with him because you're losing a lot and your heart's not really in it but then it looks like you're only quitting because of Rogan, which is not the right way to go about things. And then suddenly in your inbox, you get in, you get fucking Showtime emailing you saying, hey, we want to give you a deal to do not only a stand-up comedy special, but also be the host of our new... Because if I'm not mistaken, wasn't Brendan the whole... Didn't Brendan... Look, like, again, yeah, you have to give the guy credit for this, Like, actually. didn't he, Wasn't he the person who launched the kind of combat sports side of Showtime? I don't think they were doing a lot of combat sports, mixed martial arts. No, they're doing combat sports. They do boxing, of course, but they weren't doing MMA. So I think Brendan may be the person who was responsible for launching the MMA side of uh, Showtime. And, you know, so they offer him a special with however X amount of money. They produce it, everything. And then they offer him also a deal to have his own show. And I think at the beginning, if you remember, that Showtime day, if I'm not mistaken, that show, it was on TV. So they would take segments of the show, cut it down and have it on TV. But over the time, you know, it, it was fucking terrible. So it was on TV and he also did the kind of podcast thing on YouTube and shit. So maybe that's why he took the deal because it was a quick way to show everybody that he knew what he was doing. He had it figured out. He had a plan in mind. That may be true. And who knows? Maybe at the, also at that same time, maybe he's 
missus was pregnant also. I'm not too sure if that's true. I'm throwing that out there, but that might be also a prob- part of it. Maybe his wife was pregnant with the first kid at the same time. So all those things kind of contributed to him deciding to do it. But I still think it was a stupid decision. I still think he shouldn't have done it. Um, he was making, you know, back then, Fire and the Kid was making so much money. They was always selling out on their merch. The shows were getting hundreds of thousands of views. He didn't need to do that so quickly. He wasn't like he was broke or anything. Um, in my opinion, from what I understand, um, he could have just chilled out a little bit done a couple of live shows, banked that money and then moved on. But, you know, maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about.